meeting, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us this evening, a city council meeting. We appreciate each and every one of you here tonight. And as we uh, get started, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And uh, as we go through our agenda, if you'd like to speak on any of the items on the agenda, <coughs> you certainly may do so. Just raise your hand and we'll recognize you and come over here. The mic is right there. And uh, feel free to tell us what you'd like to tell us for well, about five seconds. <laughs> <coughs> not, not really. Uh, we, we have plenty of time, I think, uh, whatever, whatever you need to tell us. And as we get started, we'll have council prayer and pledge to our flag. Almighty God, who has given us this good land to our heritage, as we approach this season of caring and giving, we humbly ask that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and be willing to do your will. Bless our land and city with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the residents that came here out of many lands and tongues. Endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve the people of our city. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the days of trouble, do not allow us our trust in you to fail. Finally, through obedience to your law, may we demonstrate your glory among the nations of the earth, all of which we humbly ask in your name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any additions or deletions from the agenda this, this evening? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd like council to consider adding an item uh, that you have in front of you. It's called Request for Permission to Sign an Agreement with SC and G to Convert Customers in the Alley from Overhead to Underground Service. Okay. Uh, I have one question on, uh, on, on the petitions. Uh, I had requested two items uh, to be as an ordinance. And I guess it goes to the question of the city attorney. If you look on petitions request items number three and four, under new business, they're an ordinance. They don't have to be under new business. They can be under new business. The um, I was out of town last week on Wednesday when the request came through from Mr. Leduc. The ordinance to increase the garbage fees is an easy enough ordinance to prepare and I was able to do that remotely. The other ordinance is rather complicated and that was not something I was able to do while I was out of town and so my suggestion to Mr. Leduc was to put that under petitions so council can discuss it and give guidance to us as to whether that's something council wants to do or not. It just wasn't possible to have that ordinance prepared by tonight's meeting. I, for the uh, garbage collection fee, which does have a, a write-up of the ordinance, I prefer that to be yes. under new business and leave the other one as you suggested. There's nothing wrong with that. That, that. that would be an appropriate motion to make an appropriate change to the agenda. Okay. If you could do that, Mr. Mayor, item number four would be moved to new business, and the other item, uh, as uh, the city attorney suggested, stay as item three under petitions. I beg your pardon. Say that again, please. <coughs> item item four. 400 petition goes to new business, the last item on new business. Uh, all right. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Under all business, uh, I beg your pardon, consideration of of the minutes of the work session and the regular meeting of November 24th is our next item. Do we have motion and second for approval of the minutes. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Okay. 
second. Second. To, uh, any discussion? If not, show hands, please. All in favor? Passes unanimously. Under all business, first item is approval of appointments and discussion of appointees to various city boards, commissions, and committees. Mr. LeDuc, please. Yes, sir. Um, Council Member Price would like to reappoint Frank Wright to the Energy and Environmental Committee, and this is the only appointment uh, before you tonight. Okay. Do we have a motion and a second for approval? I so move. Second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, show of hands. Uh, please. It passes unanimously. Now, how about nominations for our next uh, city council meeting? I would like to reappoint Dan Lott to the Design Review Board. Okay. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to nominate uh, Liz, re, uh, re, reappoint Liz Stewart to the uh, Planning Commission. And uh, I've got uh, another one, and I'm sitting here going blank on the gentleman's first name, but uh, 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 Mr. Callan, uh, if you give me a few minutes, I can give you his first name. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what, what committee? For uh, the uh, en Energy and Environmental Committee. And I'm embarrassed to say that I've all of a sudden drawn blank on it, but uh, I'll have it before the end of the meeting, I think. Okay, any others? I, I do have two. Nancy Dukes uh, to uh, reappoint to, to the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals and McDonald Law to the Design Review Board. Those will be on our agenda, excuse me, <clears throat> next meeting. Item two, second reading public hearing of an ordinance accepting the fiscal year 2013 to 2014 audited financial statements and authorizing variances to the fiscal year 2013-2014 budget. <clears throat> Do we have a motion and a second for approval? So move, Mr. Mayor. Second, Mr. Mayor. Okay, any discussion? No. Show of hands, please. All in favor? Passed as unanimously. Item three, second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to approve an interfund loan agreement and note for the sewer improvement repairs on Silver Bluff Road. Do we have a motion and a second for that? Approval. I so move. I second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Uh, okay. Any discussion? If not, show of hands, please. Passage unanimously. Under new business, skip. Under new business, item one, first reading of an ordinance authorizing the city of Aiken to convey real property to Holla Creek Reserve <coughs> LLC. Uh, yes, sir. I'm going to read this by its title. It's an author ordinance authorizing the city of Aiken to convey real property to Holla Creek uh, Preserve LLC, which uh, back when reserve was first brought to the city, we at that time anticipated the possibility of straightening out Anderson Pond Road uh, so that it would intersect with Silver Bluff at a point further to the north. Um, the developer gave us 66 foot of right of way for that plus a potential horse trail of another 25 feet. Uh, this road is no longer needed. Say on the 66 foot right of way, uh, we'd like to give back to the developers so they in turn could go ahead and possibly deed this to the two adjoining neighbors. So your ordinance that you have before you would allow us to take the 66 foot right of way, state that we have no interest in it, and then the 25 foot horse trail, again, the same process. Uh, once we do this, then the developer would own the property and convey it in whatever fashion they would like to uh, with the other property owners. Uh, Mr. Ebner is very familiar with this. He's the one that brought it to our attention. And so I don't know if he has any comments that he'd like to make. Uh, no, um, thanks to uh, the, the long road to get it done. The long road. Okay, all right. Do we have a motion and a second for approval? 
So move, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I'll second it. Any, dis any discussion? If not, show of hands, please. All in favor? Passes unanimously. Item two, first reading of an ordinance approving the amendment of, of lease of space on York Street Water Tower to new Singula Wireless PSC, LLC. Mr. <coughs> Yes, they, and again, I'll, um, since you've already read it, uh, the AT&T has been on this water tank for quite some time. Uh, it's time to renew the lease. Uh, it has a escalating clause in it that would increase it from the 17853 to 20531 in five years, and then up to 23611 uh, we feel that this is a fair lease. Uh, we are currently receiving 15525 so every five years, again, it will go up uh, in price. We are recommending the approval of this lease amendment for space on the York Street Water Tower to new singular wireless PSC LLC. Okay, thank you, sir. Do we have a motion to second? So move, Mr. Baird, that we approve this uh, lease agreement on first reading of this ordinance. Second. I second. Okay. Any discussion? <clears throat> Just one. Are these rates similar to what uh, the county receives or other municipalities receive for similar services? Uh, I'm not too sure what the county receives. We have not checked with other cities, but this is above or at the same rate that we're receiving at our other facilities here in the city. Thank you. Okay, any, anything else? Show of hands, please. All in favor? Passage unanimously. <clears throat> Item 3 is the first reading of an ordinance to establish the positions of risk manager <clears throat> and thoroughbred racing hall of fame and museum coordinator. Mr. LeDuc, please. Yes, we have two positions. We could take them individually or together, uh, whichever way counts would like. The first one is the risk manager position. Currently, this is a part-time position. And during the 2000s, the city of Aiken really worked hard to go ahead and to improve our safety management within the city. Uh, we, we've given you some of the numbers we had back then. Uh, our general liability. Uh, was much lower. It's now at 1.63. Uh, 1.63 means that if a community of our size within the state, uh, an average would be one. Anything above one, we're worse than average. Anything below one, we're better than average. Being at a 1.63 is uh, not where we'd like to be. Uh, back in 2008, uh, we looked at five years ago, we were at 0.79. We've almost doubled. In fact, we have more than doubled what we had before. If we could even get it down to a one, uh, we would have a savings of $188,000 a year. And I think that is more than reasonable to expect. Um, same thing with our workers' compensation. We're now at a 0.851. Uh, we used to be at a 0.5. Uh, so we again feel we could do a, a lot better. And so we feel with a full-time risk manager, there not only could be some savings substantially to the city, but in turn, we're making the city better for our employees. And that, that's number one. We don't want to see any employee uh, to get hurt. We don't want to see any other safety issues within our community. And it's just at this point in time, we're in a position where a risk manager uh, could pay for itself. In addition to that, uh, we're at a point in time where the position that is being looked at with risk management is our business license. Uh, one of our long, long, long-term employees uh, who's been working here for 55 years, Carol Busby, has decided to retire at the end of this month. And so, by taking his position and a current vacancy that we have, uh, we would have the funding to pay for this risk manager uh, by also not using Joe Babb and Associates. Uh, they generally will go out there and they'll do the first assessment and analysis. And so our risk manager 
uh, would no longer use that service and they would be doing all that initial investigation of any claims that we'd have. Uh, so between the savings we'd have in these positions, we would now be able to have a risk manager who could be full-time, a full-time <coughs> business license inspector. Uh, we'd have one part-time business license inspector and altogether the, the <coughs> savings from those positions would be able to pay for this risk manager. So any other savings we get by the fact of reducing our liability um, just puts us further ahead. And we're always constantly looking for ways to save and I feel that by having full-time attention in this one area, it'll make a major, major difference within the city of Aiken. So that's the risk manager. Any questions on the risk manager before I move to the other position? Who yes, would they report to? Uh, right now, that, that's a great question. Um, we've talked about that. Uh, currently, they're reporting to finance. I believe we'd be better off to give more major attention to this by having them report to either the manager or the assistant manager. Well, uh, the reason I ask that, we have a couple of positions now that are, uh, I'll say a couple, at least one, that probably don't need to report to the manager. But my experience on the industrial world, uh, safety has to come from the top down. That's correct. And, and if, uh, otherwise, it gets subjugated on through that. And uh, I think you mentioned and touched the human, the human suffering side of this, and really that's 99% of, of, of this. And we did have good rates, and we need to go back to that. So uh, <clears throat> uh, do we need to make that part of this motion, or? How about if we uh, get back to you on second reading? <coughs> um, again, part of my concern is just what you said if it if you don't start the top with the safety management it doesn't trickle on down and therefore that side of me says it should be under the city manager the other side says maybe it could be under the east assistant but uh, I would prefer to be underneath the city manager okay well one of the other and of course I like the assistant manager to have some assigned work too as you well know and I've presented that to our, our HR consultant <coughs> so um, you need a motion? Yeah, Mr. Well, uh, well Mr. we have Mayor. two. We have two what on I'll, the same. Uh, we, sir? Uh, go ahead. I thought he was through. No, I, I'm through. Are you uh, through with your questions on that? Yeah, but you got some. Yeah, I have, I have two questions. What is it that we stopped doing when we had such great results with a part-time person at that? I, I don't I don't, I don't know exactly. I think you're asking sure. me that. <laughs> uh, I, I really can't tell you what's happened the last three years um, that has caused a record to decline the way it has. Uh, I do know that uh, the individual who was over business license and risk management, their bent was more towards risk management. Um, than the business license. The person we now have, uh, <clears throat> his passion is more the business license than risk management. So you either get one or the other typically. Uh, we ought to be able to control the passion. Uh, so with this one person being assigned to <clears throat> this, we'll make sure that the person has the passion for risk management. Oh. <clears throat> How quickly uh, would you expect that we would reduce our general liability modifier? It's accumulated over a three year period of time. So you, you look at the last three years at average. So it will take to fully realize everything that we expect probably two to three more years. But I think there could be some almost immediate uh, reductions in just doing some very simple things. Well, your work miscomp comp goes down immediately because that's something you pay out of pocket as the injury occurs. The modifier doesn't go down immediately. The modifier will take some time. It'll take some time because it's a three-year rolling average. Uh, but the workman's comp, uh, if, if your record stays bad on that, that goes up also over time. Mm -hmm. The rate does. Well, just part of what you, you asked, <clears throat> what's the difference? Um, I know that we used to have on a regular basis uh, a sit down of all the major departments with the city manager and the safety coordinators or risk people uh, on 
at least a quarterly, if not more often basis. That has not been taking place recently. Um, the safety committee would frequently be attended by the manager or the assistant. And again, just showing, as Reggie said, the emphasis that this is a critical and important area for everybody within the city of Aiken, uh, not just a few. And if it doesn't start at the top, it's not going to trickle down to the department heads and to the supervisors, et cetera. Well, the frustrating thing is we've done it in the past with one person doing both jobs. I'm not sure why we shouldn't be able to do it again without having to hire a new person. So. Well, that one person was obviously overworked. That, uh, that one person needed help and asked for it. Well, our business license program was in good shape and our safety modifiers were in good shape from what I understand. And that's all I have. Okay. Uh, we're ready for a motion. Good. We've got another one. We've got these two. We have to take them together. Okay. We don't have to take them together. Well, I asked Gary that. Okay. <laughs> They're in the same ordinance. They're in the same ordinance. <laughs> All right, that's going to be one of my questions. Yeah. How do we divide the two up? I could, I could have it done on my second reading if you wanted to. Um, I, th I think the hope was that you would, you would be prepared to approve both of the positions, but if council wants to split them up, I can certainly split the ordinance up before second reading. Well, since we're discussing it without a motion, we have 12 or 15 people here uh, that are very interested in a jewel of the city called Rye Patch, Hopeland Gardens, and the Thoroughbred. And uh, I was thinking that uh, if we could divide that up, we would approve the first reading of the uh, risk manager, and then we would continue the Thoroughbred Hall of Racing uh, until more discussions happen, and then have the first reading on that one in uh, January, the second Monday in January. We can continue that, in, can we? Does everybody think it's generally council's desire to not discuss? No, we can discuss that it. position tonight. I don't mind discussing the second position, but I just wonder if we could continue that second part of it. If I mean, make, certainly, make first reading of this ordinance could be amended to remove <clears throat> section two of the ordinance, and then you would essentially have an ordinance where you're just approving the risk manager position. Right. You, you help me out there. That's what. We get after he describes this, then make the motion sure. that way. Thank you. Okay. So is, is your motion to? Well, he's got to describe the second thing first. The way I understand the city attorney, and then I'll make the motion to only do the risk manager I, tonight. I, I wasn't aware council wasn't interested in, in approving the second position. Well, I was. I just want to find out. If that's generally council's desire, that motion can go ahead and be made. Well, I mean, it's just coming up, so I, I wasn't aware of it until we came okay. to the meeting as well. So <laughs> it, it isn't a case where we all knew what was going to happen. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, I, I think really what we want to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, is is to take a step back and discuss this uh, this other position. Yeah. I don't think there's comes more offline discussion council. needed, yeah. And we have, when we have 12 or 15 interested citizens here on the topic, it's usually good to think about it a little bit more. Well, it would, it would not be inappropriate. Absolutely. To, it would to. not be inappropriate to uh, submit a motion to, uh, to modify this ordinance or, or to approve this ordinance on first reading by deleting section two and the discussion about the museum coordinator and have that be separated into a separate ordinance to be considered by council at a later date. Thank you. I second that motion. Yeah. No, Let's <laughs> make that motion. <laughs> Wait a minute. I move that the city attorney just said that we would separate these two items and we would vote on approval of the risk manager tonight and then there would be discussion between now and the second Monday of January and we would vote on the thoroughbred Hall of Racing Hall of Fame at that time. That's what he said. Yeah. Uh, the only issue is I, I don't know what the concern is on the part of the people that are in the audience, and we're not going to afford them an opportunity for public here input. Or, they can still discuss it after well, this. Well, no, not if, we're, not if it's not on the agenda. You've, you've, you're you're deferring it. It's, it's still on the agenda. They would have an opportunity to discuss it. Oh, okay. It. They, that's they fine. That's, all, that's all I want to make but sure. The they, motion would need a second. They took the time to come here. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Show of hands. Uh, well, any discussion? Any other discussion? 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to support the risk manager position only because I, I think that um, we did well before with just one person, and we should be able to do it well again. But okay, fine. A show of hands, please. All in favor? Okay. Those opposed? Oh, two, two. Okay. Five to five to two. It passes. Ready for the second one. Okay, the second, the second item now. We're going to discuss it. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, as most of you are aware, our longtime uh, staff member Lisa Hall is retiring in February, and we either need to go ahead and replace her position totally. Uh, her position primarily consists of uh, helping with the Thoroughbred Hall of Fame Museum. Uh, doing programming out at Rye Patch and Hopeland Gardens and taking care of any reservations uh, for Rye Patch, then showing Rye Patch uh, for those reservations. Uh, she has expressed some interest in potentially working part time uh, for the city, and so a decision needed to be made fairly quickly if we are going to, if we're going to hire her back then we needed to have a position. If we're gonna go ahead and replace her in entirety uh, with someone new, then we need to hire someone almost immediately so that they could start some training. Uh, so we felt that by at least no later than the middle of January, we'd have someone in place for this position, either to start training them or to let uh, Lisa know that she will be able to continue on in some fashion and then we uh, go ahead and assign the other duties to someone else. Uh, so that is why that's before you tonight, is to create another position uh, part-time uh, for this museum coordinator, which, assuming she's willing to accept the position under uh, the conditions we have here and council is willing to approve it, uh, we would try to work out an arrangement uh, with our current employee. I think the question came up, what happens to the other part of her work that she was doing? My understanding that she had other functions in Rye Patch and Hopeland's Gardens. Okay, as I said, there's three things that she was primarily involved with. About a third of her time was spent at the museum. About a third of her time was spent uh, doing programming, programming the, the, the concert series in the summer, story time, uh, Christmas at Hopeland's. So sometimes she'd be spending 40 hours a week just on programming. Other times she'd spend more time at the Hall of Fame, depending on the assignment. And then in between time, uh, when she would receive calls, she would uh, talk to people about the rental of Rye Patch, show it to them. Um, it was the mother of the bride or the bride hold her hands as they go through some of that process uh, in working with them. Uh, so she had three major hats that she was wearing. And so we were looking at dividing it into thirds, uh, one third going back to her, and then the other two thirds going to either working with uh, city staff to fill those positions, or coming up with another alternative, which would have been using city staff on some things and possibly contracting out the rye patch portion uh, for the other. On Thursday, I was going to talk to the, the friends about the other two-thirds, uh, which was the rye patch element and the program element. Uh, but again, the Hall of Fame Museum was a separate piece. Okay. Uh, like I said, the other alternative is we just um, allow her to retire and then we hire someone full-time to fill the position as she has been doing for the last several years. I think we've been blessed to have Lisa serve for so long and I think that it would be ridiculous to have someone else come in when she knows this job better than anybody else in this city. I would be honored to have her back in that position. Okay. I think the, the, there was the confusion was what was what was going to happen to the other two. I don't think there's any problem tonight uh, to have a motion if it's uh, agreeable to the uh, city attorney since it was on the agenda to deal with the Thurbert Hall of Race of Fame and then Mr. Ledoux and 
the Friends of the Hopelands and Rye Patch would deal with the other and have discussions. I think y'all got that lined up for Thursday. For Thursday. All right, so that would let you move forward, and I guess okay with that for having Lisa part-time. I see some head shaking, so. Okay. All right. Uh, how do if, I make if that? If you'd like to speak, just uh, come on up here. <clears throat> I, my intent is not to not do it, but just be sure we have the other two thirds uh, under, under discussion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm David Tavernier, and I'm president of the Friends of Hopelands and Rye Patch, and um, I completely agree uh, that Lisa Hall has been a tremendous asset to the city, uh, the work that she's interfaced with us on uh, over there, and, and we're, sad, we're sad about her leaving. And if anyone should have uh, a part-time position there, it certainly should be Lisa. We know about her dedication, and finding someone with that level of dedication goes beyond just a job would be very, very difficult indeed. The friend's concern is not with that at all. The friend's concern is the other part. What will happen, and we're, we're, we're very thrilled that uh, Mr. LaDuke will be joining us on Thursday, uh, but we want to be able to have some discussion uh, and perhaps uh, we can work out and come to uh, an amicable plan to have Hopelands and Rye Patch covered in such a way that this very, very valuable asset will not suffer. And that's our concern. How do I make the motion to continue with the one third of it, Mr. City Attorney? Well, oh, um, excuse me. I, I'm concerned because there's a meeting when, Roger? Thursday. 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 So we're being asked to make a decision without a meeting mm -hmm. taking place and knowing the outcome of that meeting. Um, I don't feel comfortable about voting on this, not knowing what the body is going to get together and to discuss. I respect the intelligence of staff to come up with some recommendations that would be in the best interest of all of these three items rather than having part of the information and not knowing the others. I see, I didn't understand we were going to vote on this uh, if you're talking about voting We're, we're tabling this, is that a, even we with can't. the... I, I think that's what we were going to do, yes. Okay. Yeah. Councilwoman Price, you share our, our concern. Do we need to continue this or t if you t table it? In its present state, the ordinance that you have approved just deals with the risk manager. And, this and is the ordinance contained a provision for the um, museum coordinator. So we need to officially... And, and so what, what I was understanding you were saying was, let's have the discussion, let's have first reading of the ordinance regarding the museum coordinator, whatever else may be discussed at the January meeting. Yeah. Ms. Uh, Ms. Price has brought up a good point, so I'll, I'm either way. We either continue it or have the first <coughs> reading just for the thoroughbred Hall of Fame, whichever counts. I, I think the purpose of this discussion was just to allow the, the members of the right. audience who were here to be able to talk if they wanted to that's about that's this particular issue. And the friends would support a continuance. Okay. And I think that's what the motion was. Yeah. The motion was to continue. Who yeah. else would like to speak on, on this issue? Anyone else? Okay, so that's you back there. You've got someone way back there. <clears throat> Hello, uh, my name is Jeannie Grote. I am the chairman of the advisory board for the Hall of Fame. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just wanted to um, tell you that it is the unanimous opinion of our board that having Lisa is an asset that we absolutely must have. Um, her dedication, and you know how great she is, um, that it seems an ideal solution to her semi-retirement to um, go ahead and affirm that that's the intent of the, of the council, and I hope that that's the way you all feel. So I just wanted to put that in. Absolutely. Okay. I, think, I think we all feel that way, I do. I think we all do. So, yes. <coughs> so, you want to make um, the motion, Lizzie, uh, or? The motion is made to continue yeah. the... Yeah. Um, the discussion? Yes, with the Hopeless Gardens and Rye Patch uh, issue. Second. OK, 
Okay. Do we have a second? Okay. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, nope. Just one thing. What is the purpose of the meeting on Thursday? Is it to expand the statement of work for the uh, contractor? I'm not aware of the meeting on Thursday, so Th I This is uh, the monthly meeting of the executive uh, board for the Friends, and at that meeting, uh, we were going to just discuss the various roles that we're having to fill and some of the possibilities of how we could fill those roles. You know, how do, how do we cut up? Divide the responsibilities. Thank, thank you. <laughs> cut up. Well, let me, let me get this straight. There's nothing wrong, is there, to go ahead and have Lisa, if she wants the job, to, just to hire Lisa for that one thing and then hire someone else for the other two. Well, if that would be uh, The thing is though, we, we probably do not need another full-time person for the other two. Well, hire part-time. And, and so that's what we're gonna be discussing. Okay, good. Now we know what we're gonna be Fine. discussing. Okay. Yeah, motion is second okay. for continuous. Do we need to, yeah. Well, we voted for that, didn't we? No. We did not, thank, thank you, you. okay. Yeah. Show of hands, please, to continue. Passes unanimous. Thank you. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, we, we added a fourth item petition, and uh, who would like to tell me what that petition is? Uh, this feet. There was some back and forth, and I didn't I didn't catch. I this. think the fourth item is the first reading of the garbage. Why don't we uh, do your resolution first? So we you want to do the resolution first? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this is a request for permission for us to sign an agreement with SCNG. Uh, we met and talked about the, the alley work and to underground all the wiring within the alley. Uh, we've had lengthy discussions with SCNG. They're willing to take the lead on this project. Uh, the first item that needs to be done is to uh, put conduit in the ground that the new wiring would go into uh, to convert the five properties that will need to go into the current transformer that's right behind City Hall. Uh, we have gone out to the five different locations, the five businesses, <coughs> and the sixth being in the very center of Lawrence Street, uh, where we have some lights there, and there's a little pedestal. Uh, it will cost a little under $10,000 to convert the equipment within those locations and to help SCENG uh, going from overhead to underneath with this uh, conversion. Uh, altogether, SCENG feels it'll cost around $50,000 plus or minus to go ahead uh, on the city's part to bury this conduit. They're, the procedure that they were planning on using is to go in there and dig a, a hole and then do a boring. That way it'll have very little disruption on the alley itself. Uh, they feel that this could be completed in the next couple of months, assuming that they could start early in January. So the agreement would allow us to go ahead and provide the funding uh, through the capital project sales tax uh, on a 50-50 basis with 50% coming from the city and 50% coming from SCNG. Uh, to do the undergrounding of the wiring in the alley area. So we're asking your permission tonight uh, to allow me to sign the agreement with SCNG as you have in front of you this evening. Okay. Thank you, sir. Do we have a motion and a second for this? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Okay. I second. All right, discussion? If not, show hands, please. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Mayor, uh, if you don't mind, I want to make a, a, a quick statement here. Scott's in the audience, Scott Neely, who represents SC&G. Mm -hmm. And just a personal thanks to Scott, who is extremely accessible. Uh, anytime you want to find Scott and ask him a question and connect with the community, he's here. And Scott, just know that we appreciate that connection that you have with this community. Mm -hmm. uh, let me also just say this about him. Uh, Last week, uh, we had a chance meeting at another city, and uh, we spent uh, a little bit of time discussing this, and within 24 hours, he was able to go ahead and put this agreement together for us to have tonight's meeting, so thank you. Oh, that's wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Scott. 
in other words, just okay. reading the garbage. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, what huh? I may ask uh, here is that we either suspend the rules now, have a discussion, or do we need to make the motion first? I'd like to suspend the rules because there's been some yeah. discussion about this that uh, <coughs> the city manager can enlighten us on. Would you like him to present it first? Okay. How about how about the other items that we have on the back of the? Oh, this yeah. those are petitions. We move this one up to the new business. Okay, okay. all right. At, item four, the garbage fee. Well, we got item four. Okay. four. If two item four is in right. Can I? Okay. Yes, yes. go ahead. Okay, I'm going to read this by its title. It's an ordinance establishing new charges for residential and small business garbage services. Over the last couple of months, we've been discussing with City Council uh, the fact that we have a revenue deficit um, or we have an expenditure overrun, depending on where you want to look at it, of approximately $700,000 in uh, this year and in subsequent budgets in the future. Uh, we have talked to council about several different ways that we can make up some of the differences. Uh, on a revenue side, we are looking at doing uh, investment of some of our revenue. You will be getting further information on that at the first meeting in January as to the proposal that we'll be sending out to the various uh, banks and institutions. Uh, we met last week with public safety. Uh, next week, they'll be sitting down with council at their second session, and it appears that we were able to, after that meeting, identify uh, some savings that we'll be able to present to you uh, at this next meeting. Uh, so we, we do feel like there's going to be some revenue increases or some savings that we'll be able to present. But in addition, we're still going to have a deficit and three different uh, items were brought to your attention for a possible increase. One was uh, hospitality tax. Another one was raising our general personal property taxes for homes, businesses, and vehicles, which hasn't been raised in 25 years. And then the third one was uh, the philosophy has always been that anytime we had a, a user uh, fee, it should pay for the service it's providing. And if we did that with our garbage, we'd have to raise the rates approximately $6 to cover our cost. Uh, we <coughs> recently had a proposal from a private firm to do some of this work. We're still vetting through the process and we'll be coming back to you uh, in January with a little bit more refinement of some of those numbers. But again, tonight uh, before you, one of the proposals was to raise the garbage fees up from the current $14 to approximately $19.75 uh, with the idea that if council wants to go forward with this, that we would also at the budget time, which when you start this process, we could look at making this an enterprise fund and therefore uh, as costs go up, therefore then the uh, rates would go up just like we do with the water and sewer. Uh, Council Member Ebner asked that we have this on the agenda tonight. Uh, so again, what you have before you in the ordinance is raising the garbage rates from $14 to 1975, um, effective upon second reading of this ordinance. Do you want to add about the discussion of dividing that in half or? We need that, that's motion. up to council, how you'd like to. I, I don't mind uh, because I called him out of concern. Did right, we suspend look, the rules? Ask for yeah, you want to move to suspend the rules? Move to suspend the rules and then we can all talk. Second. Okay. All in favor of that all motion? All in favor of that. Yep. Okay. Pass it Pass please. Um, I called Roger out of concern of um, <coughs> this increase, uh, $6, almost $6 increase, and uh, the fact that it's, it's almost a 50% increase. Uh, in the areas that I represent, and I know Councilwoman Diggs represent, that's a pretty steep uh, jump uh, for households. And my recommendation was that we look at uh, a $3 increase for now and a $3 increase possibly next year. Uh, when the recession hit some time back, we talked about a gradual increase knowing that any services we have should support itself. 
And based on recession, as Ms. Mary, as you probably remember and others, we didn't do anything. Uh, but by the way, they didn't, the timing is probably right to, to do something, but not um, this one cut $6 increase uh, at this time. So my suggestion is that we consider three now and three next year. Well, I've got a couple of notes here I've made. I'd like to uh, go through this and then uh, have a little discussion if necessary. Uh, okay, I, uh, I support both of these. One, we have to raise, you know, we're in a hole as far as the operation goes. We have to raise the funds or the uh, cost, the fees. So now, whether it's in three dollar increments or five seventy five, whatever, uh, that's not a question. But before we jump into anything, I don't think we have complete information yet. Sure. Mr. Coakley, uh, a couple of meetings ago, said that they were going to look at some of the cost uh, <coughs> cost items that they could actually, uh, you know, come up with. So far, we really hadn't heard back yet. I'm, just in a real casual conversation with Tim, I asked him and he said, I think we can do it better than Tyler as far as uh, costs go. Hopefully, uh, you know, once we start getting the costs from him, the cost savings, we can make a better uh, uh, decision. Uh, hopefully the reductions in uh, costs will not involve reduction in personnel. I think that's one thing we you know, it's nice to be totally efficient, but we also also should consider the individuals that are working and they're doing a good job. And this is from personal experience. The uh, making the uh, even though this is not the question about making it an enterprise fund, I think it's a good move. But one of the things uh, you know, we need to explore potential cost cutting measures. You know, the rise in fees may not be, if we figure out how to save some money, the rise in fees may be actually reduced, you know, maybe just one half, we won't have to implement the second half of that if we don't go with the three dollars. <coughs> one of the one of the things which fascinates me is uh, talking about uh, recyclables. Many cities actually uh, separate their recyclables such as glass, plastic, paper, cardboard, and so forth. Some of them actually uh, separate colored glass from uh, tinted glass, be it brown or Heineken green or whatever it happens to be. And uh, the recycling is actually enforced by statutes. You know, and hopefully, you know, to make Aiken green, we're a fairly green city. I think uh, our citizenry should be very, uh, you know, cooperative as far as setting up sorting out our glasses and then once we start sorting it out i'm sure we can get some kind of a client to purchase our recyclables even it's not going to cover the whole thing it's not going to cover the whole rise but i don't care if uh, you know if we're ten dollars in a hole if we make one dollar on our recyclables i think we're better off than not uh the reason we might as well get used to uh, <laughs> uh recycling because uh, EPA and DHEC are probably going to be on our backs in a couple of years anyway, mandating uh, recyclables. So we can get a leg up on that. And plus, it cleans up the environment. Now, as far as I understand, and uh, Tim, if I'm wrong, correct me on this. Yard trash is collected weekly. And uh, one of the things is yard trash, you know, is cyclical. I mean, you don't put out, a, you know, 300 pounds of yard trash throughout the year, uh, you know, <clears throat> spring, summer, fall, winter are all different. Do we have enough yard trash that we have to have a weekly pickup? You know, could we have a pickup once every two weeks or possibly once every three weeks and so forth? And people, once they understand what the schedule is, you know, they'll just accumulate their yard trash and then put it out the day. And you know, we don't have to have a recycling truck, we don't have to have a garbage truck and a uh, yard trash truck running through the neighborhoods, you know, once a week, um, you know, well, once a week uh, on their uh, pickup days. Uh, I know there's always the exceptions and all you have to do is just call down to his uh, department and if you have some special 
outsized uh, material to pick up, building material, concrete type leftovers, they'll be more than happy to come out. They charge you a slight fee, but it's just a lot better off than you having to truck it off somewhere. One of the things uh, about yard trash is right now, the yard trash goes into the uh, landfill. Now, I'm not sure about this, but I talked to some of the people that know a little bit about this. And there's supposed to be a company, uh, I believe their name is Brico. They're the ones that make the uh, fertilizers and they buy all kinds of yard trash. They gin it up, ferment it, make some kind of a uh, feed. And they're the people that sell the grasshopper uh, fertilizer. I think we're all familiar with uh, some, of the, some of the best fertilizers you can get. Another thing is, uh, Tim should be able to take a look at the uh, trips we make to the dump or to the landfill or to the recycle center. We have to make sure that our trucks are really filled. I mean, if we start making trips when the truck is uh, half filled, you know, that's going to cost us a lot of gas. I mean, gas prices and diesel are coming down, but in fact, I can guarantee it, and I'll even bet you today, gas prices are going to go back up. <laughs> so, uh, uh, like I say, take a look at the uh, number of trips that are made. Now, there's a lot of questions that I ask, a lot of ideas I've bounced out. No, I don't have any answers. But talking to some of the people, I've been getting a lot of emails, I've been getting some phone calls. And there's a lot of people interested in this, and we have some savvy people, some uh, people that used to work at the site and so forth. They're very interested in this, and maybe if we had an ad hoc committee of some sort, just establish it, you know, for the time being with this purpose in mind, to take a look at all the various options. You know, they're chemists, uh, engineers, and what have you. Let them kind of mull it over. If we decide, you know, let's let a committee or a commission take a look at it, pushing, uh, if we decide to go with Tyler, pushing that back one or two months is really not going to affect anything at all. I mean, obviously going with Tyler is not going to help this year's budget one way or another. We're still going to wind up in a hole, so to speak. Uh, and whether they start in February or March or as the 1st of January, it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, like I say, I'm willing to support both of these uh, measures. I just uh, think even if we vote, you know, for the uh, 575 increase now, <coughs> if we adopt some of these cost uh, savings processes, we might be able to delay an additional increase or a smaller increase in the out years. Roger, we actually have a recycling expert with us tonight, <coughs> um, Norman from the dumpster depot, just happened to be in the audience tonight, and he has several different ideas that um, can help the city and Put them on help the us save some money. <coughs> uh, would you stand, Norman? You probably <coughs> seen him in the paper, but he's the one that gave out the ideas for recycling your cooking oil for after Thanksgiving. And um, I, I, I'd like to hear some things, uh, something from Norman as to what he can do to maybe um, help us save some money or generate some revenue if, if you would allow him to. I think it's a great idea. I invite him if he's speak. got some ideas. Would you allow him to? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I was talking no. to, to Roger a moment. <laughs> I, I was asking, would it be possible for Norman to um, come to the mic and just give us a general idea of what the um, dumpster depot does and how he could, uh, if he had any cost-saving ideas? I would. I would say for yes. Us. Say yes. Yes. Anything we can learn would be good. I'm not, I really didn't plan on speaking, so I'm not prepared. Well, you showed up, so <laughs> we got you. I just came to the theatrics, and uh, <laughs> I guess I'm part of it. Hope you're not disappointed. <laughs> you're part of it. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. I don't know you yet, but I really need to get to know you. You are forward thinking, and, and that's exciting to me. How do you say your last name? Omoki. Omoki. And it's not Japanese, it's Hungarian. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my name is Norman Dunning, and I'm the founder of the Dumpster Depot. 
Um, I don't know how we fit into what you guys are trying to do, but everything that you just described are exactly what we're working on. And, and we, haven't really, we haven't really approached the city with any plans yet. Um, I've, I've talked to Mr. LaDuke, um, and, and I think if he likes what we're saying, then it may be something that you guys would like to look at. But we have a plan that we'd like to present that we do believe that recyclables should be part of the city's plan to reduce cost for waste. We have a plan where we think that we can revenue share with the city for the recyclables that you collect. We think <coughs> that will add anywhere from 17 to 23 jobs in Aiken that are not currently here. And we think that that'll look like $5 million in just income over the next five years. So you know, of course, that comes along with, uh, with, with income tax and things like that. Also additional uh, sales tax. On the yard waste side, we would like to see if the city's interested in reopening the old landfill and maybe working on some type of a private public partnership with Dumpster Depot. Um, we would also like to include Goodwill because we're trying to bring a lot of these people around the area that may not have vehicles to drive to work, to work at our two facilities, one for composting, one for recycling. And um, we think that we can take a lot of the yard waste that's currently being buried and do exactly what you said, grind it up, mix it with food waste, and possibly horse manure. Some of the DHEC regulations may prevent us from using the horse manure. But there's a lot of food waste that we're carrying to the landfill that could be mixed with this yard debris and we could have a sellable product at the end instead of what we have now. All these things will reduce the amount of trucks that go to the landfill, which are some savings built in there. And we think that it'll save a lot of money on labor. And we're not saying get rid of jobs, we're saying those people will be much more efficient and can get a lot more done for the city. So I think that you're right on with your ideas. I think that if it's something you guys want to hear more about, we have some detailed plans that we'd like to present to you. The composting is something that literally the regulations were passed just a month or so ago. So this is something that was not possible in South Carolina that is today. So um, have I answered any questions that you guys may have or? How much would this cost us? It, it would cost the city absolutely nothing. What we're trying to do is zero risk for the city and only reward. What we can do, uh, Mr. Mayor, is to have uh, <coughs> you on the, not on the agenda, but a pre-meeting to give us more information. Mm. Uh, work session, yeah. That would be good to do that at our <coughs> January meeting. You know, you know, we're talking we're talking about budget matters right now, mm -hmm. and we said some time ago that we wanted to have another meeting with council mm -hmm. to sit down and talk about the budget, because it's obvious to me that we we just we're ragged here. We're, we're talking about different things, and then here's something new, and I think we need to talk together again. I think it's mm -hmm. a little bit premature to vote on anything for the budget right at this meeting. My personal opinion. Steve, you said it yourself and we know it, if we know uh, uh, that, that both Roger and Tim and others have been working and they're still working. Is that right, Tim? Yes, sir. So we're, we're not finished yet working to, to get all the details together. So. Yeah. I don't know why we would be pushing anything particularly for this for this meeting well, because I, I, it's obvious to me we're not ready to, to well, vote. Mr. Mayor, I think I mentioned this a uh, couple of the staff quote I sent you uh, to. about two meetings ago I said we should do the best we can in-house, meaning the city capability <coughs> to reduce the cost as much as possible. And then once we do that, or once we have the figures for that, then we can take a look at outsourcing to uh, Tyler. But right now, <coughs> we're, I'm not saying we're inefficient, but we're in a hole as far as uh, the enterprise goes, for lack of a better term. 
We're but in I the think hole. we're talking about the same thing. Steve. Yeah, we are. I'm saying. We are. I think we're I'm not going to cure the budget. We're not going to cure the budget between now and uh, July one. I don't care what we do. Basically, we need to I'm start doing. I'm not so sure it. we can't. Why, why can't? We? Well, uh, July one. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to see it. I'd love to well, see I, it. I think we. I think we. We got to make up seven hundred thousand dollars, and I'm not sure we can do that. Well, it's been made up with FEMA. Let's let's start let's start with that. We got that from FEMA. Okay. We we are level on our budget, but what the problem is, we won't be next year. Wait a minute. And, and we, we've got to make up things that we can do for our city to keep us moving forward and better. And that's what we're looking at. We don't, you know, we all know we've been 25 years without tax increase. And that's amazing. And we've done it because we wanted our citizens to not have to have a tax increase. Millie, it just is. But we've known at one point in time, it's obvious, that we were going to have to have one. And I think, I think we're going to have to have one this time. I'm not saying how much millage it is, but we've got to if we're going to keep on and doing the things that we need to do for, for our wonderful city. And, uh, well, but, I, know, but I think we're I, saying I the same thing. The only, the only thing we're not ready. I disagree with you about is what? why, you know, if you, if you think the FEMA money and what have you and what we had in the rainy day fund is satisfactory to uh, you know the level our budget that's fine I'm not going to quibble with that because I don't have the figures right here but what I'm saying is what about 15 16 what about we need to start looking at potential savings today otherwise we're just going to push the problem down that's exactly what I think I was saying I, I, I agree with you Steve I agree with you well, well, Mr. Bear, what, but, but I suppose. The thing is, I don't think we're ready to do anything on our budget as far as passing any piece of it until we have the whole thing together and it makes sense and we can, we can explain it to our citizens. Well, are you this again? is what we're doing and why. This is what we're doing and why we have to and, and those kind of things. Well, Mr. Well, Bear, I think Mr. We've Mr. Got, Mr. Mr. Me. No, let me finish this. Okay. Mr. Bear, I, I get what you're saying. What you're saying is that we should not be hasty with what we're doing. Absolutely. We talked about hospitality taxes. We talked about a millage increase. Absolutely. At, at one meeting, we were all together, and then suddenly we were not all together. Now we're talking about a garbage fee. Uh, some of us are together, some of us are not. I don't support a, a full $6 garbage fee. So what you're saying is that we have not fully talked and planned through any of this. It is making a hasty decision because we know we have a $700,000 deficit and how do we get to that deficit right away? And some of the things that we're quickly throwing out may not be the correct answer. I called Roger because I, I was concerned in terms of whether a $3 and based on what we got with the stormwater reimbursement, whether that would help us to make up the numbers that we're trying to get to in terms of our deficit. We think we'll be okay, but do we know that absolutely for sure? Roger, I don't know that we do. Do we know that for certain? We think we do. Um, <laughs> so, and it goes back to what the mayor is saying. We don't know enough about all this to, to find out what a million increase would give us garbage and all these things. We said we were going to have another meeting, and now it's come to this where Okay, where Mr. It, it Mayor. sounds like somebody, others want to push the budget or pieces of the budget, and and we didn't have that meeting. We still need that meeting so we can be together on what we bring to our citizens. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. I don't think I mentioned the budget while I was talking about the potential for looking at ways to save in uh, Tim Coakley's area. Well, see, it is part of the budget, though. It, well, it, it helps no, determine I, what we're going to present. Gonna, we're to not going to do anything. We're not. We're just going to talk and uh, look at potential, potential ways to better manage our waste, our waste disposal, if you wish. Okay, and that's part of the budget. Well, that affects not, the budget. Well, it Does doesn't it affect the budget until we put some dollars in it, and we're not really going to do any dollars. Are we done with Norman? Yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I go back to my earlier comment. I'd like to hear more from Norman, and I'd like that at a work session for us to hear fully what he has to, uh, to offer. I agree. 
all I said, we need a committee or an ad hoc committee to take a look at this. It doesn't increase our costs at all. It I doesn't affect I, the budget. I if they come up with some I good ideas. With, I don't disagree with any of that at all. Then I, I don't see where it affects the budget. Well, I, depending on what comes out of that meeting, it, it might help us in the budget. Oh, yeah, I mean, it might. I mean, somebody might drop $700,000 on our table, too. But basically, that's not, that's not exactly, you know. I said it may. Why, you know, why don't we look a little bit forward and look at all the, uh, you know, look at all the options that faces. Maybe none of the ideas I mentioned will work, you know. Steve, you, you have a wonderful list there, and, and all those things are important. And that's exactly what I'm saying. We're, but we need to get together again as a council and put all this together. <clears throat> and this can be a piece of it. I agree with you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I, we're <clears throat> ragged here. I mean, one, one day we talk about something, then we talk about something else, and a piece of this, and a piece of that. And, and it's, uh, so you, you it, want to table it's, this discussion? It's not right. Is, is that, well, let me make a comment, if you don't mind. I've, I've been listening more than I normally do. <laughs> I, I certainly would love to receive tomorrow morning a copy of the FEMA money status that shows that we've got $700,000 that can plug that hole. I don't think council's been told that yet. I think some members of council have been told that, but um, and, and I, I'm not really sure that's the way to, to plug um, our, our deficit. Um, if we're going to have another budget meeting, I want some information ahead of time so I can come prepared to discuss what we're going to discuss. We've gotten into the nasty habit of coming into a meeting and getting information for the first time sometimes. Sometimes we might have discussed it a little bit in the past, and then we're put in the position of making a decision. And, and in a few cases recently that we can all point to, we've, we've made some bad decisions. Um, we, we didn't take into account the employees before we put the item uh, on the um, on Tyler uh, on the agenda and given the issues of that week that probably shouldn't have been on although I did recommend to the mayor that it stay on and we allow public input but we really didn't get our side across before we we heard from the people in in public safety so um, but I, I would like to get updated I also would like to see us get quite aggressive on asking the state for their 15 percent reimbursement I guarantee you if we were Charleston County well, we were Greenville County, we'd be getting that 15%. Aiken County was hard, severely hit uh, with that storm, more than any other county in the state. And I think we need to go to our delegation and ask them to press for that 15% reimbursement. <coughs> Again, Stewart can tell us how much money that is, but I can guarantee it would certainly help our coffers. Can we make that some type of resolution to... Yeah. to well, well, well it, approach the delegation. It, it, it's just something that that, but, that needs to be done. But what I'm talking about is the longer view. Well, okay. I, I, this I, year, even now, I never heard about this FEMA giving us extra money. I mean, maybe we have I. an ice storm next February, and then we can take care of the 16 budget. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's what that's what you're saying, or not you're saying, but that's basically the attitude. What we need to do is inside cost cutting. Revenue, I, I, revenue generating inside the city, so we don't rely on a fee. Steve, I don't, I don't disagree with you. We were supposed to have a meeting last week to see what public safety could put on the table. Oh, but you couldn't help. And it was a zero. I know. So uh, maybe now that now I understand they've got something for this week, maybe that they can that they can put on. We're talking about our deficit represents 1.5 percent of our annual budget, and what we're saying collectively is we can't come up with a 1.5 percent savings out of 49 million dollars now if we're going to have a I resolution why don't believe. we just task all the departments next year come in with a two percent reduction in cost that would based on my knowledge of the numbers that would do the trick that would that do the trick there. um well mr mayor i agree with you i don't feel uh like like i'm ready to make decisions I, I it's funny because i find myself in agreement with mr Hamoki and mr duar and uh mr Edner that you know some, we, we need to do something but i don't think we have the information yet and and with you i'm in agreement but i don't think we have enough information yet to, to know exactly what we need to do or how much of it needs to be done well, that's why i recommended and, a committee to talk right to, and you know let some smart but i think everybody agrees with you steve um as to as to having not only maybe uh, some smart people looking at potential cost savings within that department but everybody also agrees 
this council needs to sit down and, and really scrub the numbers ourselves. And as far as I'm concerned, I'd be perfectly happy tabling this issue for tonight. Um, you know, I, I was also going to be equally happy to vote for a $3 uh, increase in the fee, but I honestly would rather know what our costs are going to be before, before I start raising the, mm -hmm. the fee for it. You know, I, I used the analogy before the meeting. It's like going in buying a car before we know what the cost of the car is. Um, I, you know, I'd like to know what our what all these things are. And I'm not talking solely about the, uh, the solid waste service, but I'd like to know enough about um, this entire budget situation, this this shortfall, before I make a decision, or before any of us make a decision about how much we're going <clears> to <throat> ask our taxpayers to pony up to cover it. You know, I think there's ways, like you said, Steve. I think there's ways that we can that we can scrub the budget that we might can find that. 1.5 percent or 2 percent or whatever it is so you know I'd, I'd be just as happy to go ahead and, and continue this tonight along with the the uh, issue of uh, making an enterprise fund an item that I had brought up a year ago um, you know which I still think is a good idea but I'd rather do both of these things after we have more information rather than before we have more information and keep in mind one other thing that is that our budget that we're operating under right now is quite distorted uh, not only does it have a seven hundred thousand um, dollar deficit, it already has. But FEMA Roger money. had to do some extraordinary things to get it down to that level. And it already has some FEMA money in it already. Yes, and that's that's using some FEMA money. <clears throat> so uh, the information that we're going to need to make the decisions that we are going to need to make might not be available. Um, uh, quite well, quite honestly, be, it might be available. We might just not. Have Look we, we need to be flexible. We'll need to make a decision, but then as we get more information, we may have to add to it or change it. Yeah, but that's probably it's true. going to be a very dynamic issue between now and the time when we put together the 2015-2016 budget. That's true. Well, regardless of, regardless of what, uh, by the way, I didn't make a motion. We're not going to vote on that. Well, oh, the motion that we're going to be talking about is the raise raising it. Now, whether we raise it three dollars or five seventy-five, whatever it happens to be. Uh, is totally independent. Uh, eventually, we're going to have to raise it, regardless of what happens, regardless if everybody jumps up and down and says, yeah, let's have a committee and all that kind of good stuff. We're going to have to have some sort of an increase. If you think a step increase is probably the way to go, I, I agree with that. If you think we should go whole hog to 575, you know, I'll go either way. I agree with making it an enterprise fund, and that's why I think it's critical if well, it hadn't come up yet, but the item on petitions, if we do make it an enterprise fund, they're going to have to come up with some economies and ways to generate revenue to make it an effective enterprise fund. Otherwise, we might as well just contract the whole thing out and hope uh, they don't raise the prices on us. Okay, Mr. Mayor, where are we? Are we, we have where no are motion we? for anything. There's no motion on the table at all. No. So we, we, we need to live in reality. Uh, you got to remember, uh, if you've, and, I, and my motion is going to be to propose what uh, Ms. Price said, we'd raise it $3 now and, change, and say whatever the difference would need to be raised in the future. But if you just take a look at the basic numbers, uh, if we can save, you know, Two dollars and seventy-five cents in January, uh, or even we save three seventy-five. I'd be glad to back off my motion. But the reality is, we're not going to cut a third of what we're doing out. Okay, and that, that's where we'd have to go tonight. So we got to raise. I think we need to raise it something, and we can deal with the other half of it at whatever time we need to at the next budget year. And I think that's the reality of where we are. And so, if we're ready for the motion, this is what I would, uh, I'll move a motion, and then we'll go from there. I uh, move. Uh, uh, Mr. Abner, before you do that, can we hear from Mr. Uh, Duke first in terms of his position? Please. Uh, his comments, I should say, on, on this. Like Dick, I've been very quiet tonight, just listening. <laughs> Uncharacteristically quiet. <laughs> um, and it's been a great discussion that, uh, because a lot of this is philosophical. You know, what do we do and how do we do it? Uh, the FEMA funds that we have coming in will cover sh the shortfall we have, it, it, but it's a one-time shortfall funds that are coming in. And when we passed the budget back in June, we essentially all agreed that 
we didn't want to kick the can down the road, but to we had one week to get a budget passed, and so we all agreed that we would artificially prop the budget up using one-time funds uh, to get us by this year, knowing that some action needed to be taken. And it's great. I mean, we could sit here and, and reduce the budget by a percent and a half, two percent. Um, some of you may not like some of the things that we cut up uh, out of the budget, um, but again, that can be done. And I've, I've seen that happen, and, and we could do the same thing here. But if you went across the board and said, okay, we're going to cut out 2%, um, we're not going to stop picking up trash, we're not going to stop picking up recycling, well, we might uh, not do the electronic waste anymore, we might not pick up the oil, the tires. You have to cut out something uh, as, as you go along if you're going to take that approach. Unfortunately, the past couple of weeks, for me anyways, has been kind of a blur. And I know for Tim this past week, he's been sick, I've been sick. And so we have not had a chance to sit down and really go over the numbers overall. We do know that, uh, like we were talking about Lisa Hall, their operation could be out into the thirds, recycling, yard waste, and household garbage. Overall, the numbers that I've seen from Tim is that the total costs of the three operations are really not going to change a whole lot. How we looked at each operation is going to change somewhat because a lot of the administration costs were in the household garbage. Uh, but this again, Tim and I have not had a chance to sit down. We're going to sit down this week, probably tomorrow, and start going over these numbers. And once we have those numbers, we can refine it. You know, we might be able to get from $19.64, which is the last number I recall that we had for expenditures minus some revenue that we had coming in. Uh, maybe it'll reduce down to $19.50 or $19.40, but we're certainly not going to go down to $18 or probably be lucky if we could even get down to $19 through some cost efficiencies. Uh, Norman Dunnigan and I have talked about ways that in the future we could save some money. But even if we could come to an agreement with Norman tonight, which we're not, uh, to start up this operation is going to be several months from now. And you're not going to see the cost savings for some time. And there are some things that we will have to go through with the landfill to get it reopened and readdressed uh, through DHEC. But all those things are possible. And, and Norman's getting a what I've asked for was a white paper that we could then present to council uh, to talk about this further. So to make, kind of sum this all up, we do need to have further discussion uh, in January to cover the full extent of any increase we're going to need in the budget. If you vote tonight for $3, that will at least make up a fairly significant portion. And I would feel comfortable tonight saying if we had an increase of that nature, then when we get to the next budget, which it sounds like I may be involved in in some aspect or another, we could then start looking at how do we make up the difference in the next year's budget. Uh, we'll have a much better, be able to define much better what those numbers are uh, in the next couple of months because we'll be hitting that six year period of time. Uh, we really looked at numbers carefully. I know each of you have. This is a hard process, a hard decision mm -hmm. uh, for each of us to make. Because uh, anytime we make any increase, it affects a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and most of all, it affects our citizens. And that's why we've been so reluctant for 25 years not to raise taxes. Because that's the last thing we want to do. Uh, and. The one thing, as, as Dick had brought out, several things had to be cut out of this year's budget. So even though we're saying it's a $700,000 deficit, there are several things that we wanted to do. And look at all the positions that are frozen. Um, we have not added any new positions this year. Everything that was in this year's budget was frozen. Uh, I know George has got several positions that he uh, this recently, a couple hours ago, was talking to me about adding some positions. Um, and all those are frozen. And then there's several that are in the current budget uh, that were funded previous years that are also frozen. 
And so that, you know, we have taken all those cost savings to try to get to where we are at today. Uh, whatever decision council makes, obviously staff will work with. Uh, we would like to move this process forward though so that we can start implementing and making decisions because starting early part of next year, we start the budget process. And it'd be great if we could go to staff and say, here's what things you could look towards as you start preparing that next budget. Uh, and we're in need direction. So tonight, January, uh, some resolution's gonna have to be made concerning the budget. And if you could start that process tonight, that would be great. Well, do uh, we have Mr. enough information today to make a decision on three or five seventy-five? Or should we wait I'd be happy we have a I'd, I'd, to I'd be comfortable with three dollars. We we know that our costs are definitely higher than seventeen dollars a month. There's there's no doubt in my mind that our costs are higher than that. And no matter what we do, uh, we're and Tim, I don't want to speak for you, but I don't see how we're going to be able to reduce costs significantly uh, much below $19 uh, mm -hmm. and still cover everything that we have to get covered. But again, I don't think you will either. I mean, well, we, we have to live in reality mm -hmm. here. Let's don't forget reality. But it's going to go up. I mean, I even said, you know, we're, it's just a question of how much. But just because we're going to raise the uh, monthly uh, collection fees doesn't mean that we shouldn't look. Oh, Even absolutely. if we can take that one or 50 cents off of that, mm -hmm. we'd be a lot better off. And, you know, we can't pray for an ice storm next year to have FEMA, uh, you know, subsidize our budget. Don't do that. No. <laughs> I mean, but that's, that's basically what we're saying. We've got to start looking at how we can meet next year's budget to balance it without the ice storm. Yeah, I, I agree with just what the city manager said, a, a <coughs> partial raising of the rate. And I don't, I don't believe that you're going to be able to cut costs much. We need to look to solve this on the revenue end. And that's what I was speaking with Norman back there in the corner. Um, I think there's some opportunities uh, in recycling and in composting and stuff like that. Where mm -hmm. We may be able to generate more revenue offset some of the shortfall and that's a little bit longer term also right you're not going to be able to see any of that immediately um the other thing i just wanted to say was we've always been short you know we've been using money out of the general fund all the way back well it's never balanced the user fee has never covered solid waste in the 15 years that i've been here so this isn't something new that's you know a huge spike in our costs or anything our costs have been relatively flat over the last 10 years, um, it's we've always had a practice of propping those services up through the general fund. Um, so yeah, I would just say that I'd be in the, of the opinion of a partial increase at this point. And if you give us a year or so to work on the revenues, you know, we may be able to, to balance it out. If not, we'll have to come back and ask for an additional raise at that point. Well, that they would give us a few months to go ahead and really refine things and uh, again whether we decide to go with some other type of service or, or make some other changes as we're preparing this next budget we'll be able to go ahead and look at that a lot more closely and, and Steve you had mentioned about forming a committee one of the reasons we have the environmental committee or the environmental and energy committee was specifically to look at things like that and that's part of what the that committee's been charged with now whether we have all the right people at the table uh, that committee is fairly active and in fact they're going to be celebrating this year is what did we say was our birthday 30th year 25th year, 25th year anniversary of recycling here um, in the city of Aiken you know we're the first wow. city in the state that started recycling uh, back in 1990 so this is our 25th year anniversary and there's gonna be a big celebration with that and I remembered the first name of my nominee by the way for that committee <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Andy <laughs> Andy Allen Andy yes. And I like <laughs> just want to say that uh, my appointee to the Energy and Conservation Committee here is, is here in the audience, been very active, Mr. <coughs> Archibald, with, uh, with the chairman, uh, Ron Delamora, uh, Del 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 
tough time with those Italian names, uh, in fashioning a really top-notch Earth Day program for the city. Mm -hmm. so. And she's Mr. doing a good Mayor. job. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor, from yeah. what I've heard, I'm going to try this, and the city attorney can help me. I move that we raise on first reading the garbage rate $3 per month, effective on the second reading, which will be the second Monday of January, and that the ordinance include for the city manager in the 15-16 budget, close the rest of the gap in the cost. Through an enterprise fund? Through the enterprise fund. Well, now. I second that. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. If, wait a minute. That's. Oh. If, if, yeah. Can you do that? That's, I'm not sure what that means. That's yeah. right. throwing a curveball in there. But it's two. Uh, well, I think that the, the enterprise fund will be a second issue. Yeah, I, 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 I suggest that we well, use that. We have to talk about the enterprise fund first and well, then go back to. And, no, no, no. Uh, tonight, I want, uh, tonight, my motion is to raise the rate $3 per month uh, on our first reading and that also this ordinance require the city manager, the council, and city staff to close the rest of the cost gap or missing uh, uh, funding gap in the 15-16 budget. And that gives us that, plenty of time to do what uh, Norman's talking about and Tim's talking about and Steve and everybody. I, I don't know that we need to have all that attached yeah. wouldn't, to it. Wouldn't you, and I don't think you can do that. If, if I may, wouldn't you achieve the same result if you simply said to increase the garbage collection fee to $17 per month, effective on second reading? And then you've got the 15-16 budget that will be coming up six months down the road, but you're going to have discussions about it starting in January, end of January, early February. February. Correct. Okay. I mean, you, you, you're going to be talking about it already. Um, and the so engineer you, will concede to the lawyer. Thank you. <laughs> well, I second that motion. May I have a copy of the minutes, please, <laughs> Madam Clerk? <laughs> um, I, I just want to make uh, two quick comments. Um, um, Number one is, is I hope in this process of starting the budget in February, which council has never been involved in prior. We tried it last year um, for the very first time based on an ordinance that we passed that you may not be familiar with, Roger, and it, it turned out um, for various reasons not to be as effective as I thought it would be. Um, but I would very much like to get involved with the budget as soon as it can. And if you're in the process of making white papers, I sure would like to see one on cost accounting because a good example is uh, in the public services budget uh, where Tim uh, spends an inordinate amount of time mowing the grass at the airport, yet he pays for it and the airport doesn't. And there are a myriad of other issues yeah, like that. Yeah, there's a lot of them. So we, we need to get into cost accounting. Public safety, they do a lot of things for other agencies that they ought to be billing the other agencies for. We heard that last week. That gives us a better picture of where our costs are incurred uh, instead of, instead of uh, getting a, a slightly distorted picture. But I support the, uh, the motion for the increase. So the motion is merely the $3 increase. $17. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got that. Uh, any dis more discussion? If not, show of hands, please. All in favor? Pass is unanimous. Thank you, everyone, okay. for the discussions. Very good. Okay. Okay. I, have, I do have a question. Okay, we have an environmental uh, committee. How do we task them? Does the uh, council task them to start working on this uh, recyclable uh, type uh, they've, function, or how do they pick up their? They've charge? already been doing it, Steve. I think they've gone down and had a tour of the facility in in Augusta. Yes. So you're already working on recycling. <coughs> They're quite an active committee. Yeah, they're among the most active we have, believe it or oh, not. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, I play golf with the chairman. So. Oh, okay. Well, next, at, your, at your next golf game, and uh, he's oh, definitely. At third. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, under petitions and requests. <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, before we get into that, I withdraw my uh, request to. Uh, have the garbage collection go on the enterprise fund since we've agreed we'll discuss that with the next budget year. Right. Okay. All right. Item one, approval to unfreeze employee positions. We have uh, several positions before you tonight. Um, 
one is an athletic coordinator position and with our activity is going to get started rolling in February uh, by the time we'd be able to hire someone and get them on board uh, we feel we need to fill that uh, as quickly as possible public safety has a couple of vacancies for driver operators by having these vacancies uh, it's requiring our other operators to work a lot of extra overtime and by filling them you'll actually save money and so we need to get those filled as quickly as possible our maintenance worker three um, who does all of our utility locates uh, is retiring and again we'd like to fill that position and the business license inspector we have one position that's open and with mr busby retiring at the end of december we'll have a second position open and so we're asking that we be able to fill one of those positions which is part-time these are the positions we have before you tonight okay thank you sir do we have a motion and a second for I so move. second okay any discussion if not, show hands, please. All in favor? Passes unanimously. Two, meeting schedule for December 2014. Typically, we uh, only have one meeting in the month. Our second meeting would be scheduled for the 22nd, and we are recommending that council uh, consider canceling the second meeting in December. Do we have a motion to second? So move. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? If not, show hands, please. All in favor. Passes unanimously. Item three, first reading of an ordinance to change the garbage collection account to an enterprise fund. He went through that. need to go to number five. Number five. Requests that council change CPST two and three funding order and purpose and need for items. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I asked the city manager to put that on there, and I have, uh, I brought it up at our last meeting. Uh, as well aware, uh, the Hitchcock Parkway is is not uh, on the Capital Project Three uh, schedule right now. Uh, it was in a position in front of the University Parkway, as well as the uh, purchase of land for a park on the north side. Uh, the voters had said that the city council can uh, uh, spend the money in whatever order we want to. So I think that's one item we need to look at on Capital 3. The other thing is, uh, I think uh, looking at the definitions of each of these Capital 2 and Capital 3 projects that was in the newspaper versus how our intent is to spend the money in the future. And the, we... Uh, my, I think I understand from the rulings we've had from the Department of Revenue and my discussions that we can use the money for one purpose or another as long as it's related. But my real concern is that we do due diligence how we're going to spend the money and if we, so that we have a council vote what we're going to change the need and the purpose of this money. The real reason is looking if you go to Capital 4 and somebody raises a hand, well you didn't exactly spend the money for what I voted for. And remember, the citizens of the Aiken County voted for this. So I have two concerns here. One, that we acknowledge that some of these projects aren't going to get done and change the order. And second, we really read what the purpose and need is. And a good example is the work at the landfill. It specifically says to construct a park on the city landfill. Okay, uh, we all agree that's not the right place. But I think we should vote on that to say we're going to spend it at, at location X. And the reason so why? Turn, huh? And the reason why? And the reason why. And that way, when we get to 2016 and Capital Four people up here and say, well, you didn't do it right, uh, we can say, wait a minute, you know, you may not like council's decision, but we voted on that and we all agreed to it. And I, I don't, am I making, am I correct, Mr. City Attorney? Definitely. Yes. I think we need to. Uh, so if this explicit. takes, it's going to take some due diligence, and we probably don't need to do it until after we get the garbage rates done. But we sure ought to do this in, uh, sure, early February. It's going to take a little due diligence, and by then maybe Mr. Parker and Mr. Ledoux will have a little more guidance what we will be doing with the money. But we're talking so many million dollars here. It'll show up on the front page of the paper if we don't do it properly. Right. Mm -hmm. 
example, I, I, this is a, a matter of our having an ordinance uh, to change the purpose and need. I think all of us agree that we do not want the funds to be spent with a north side facility on the landfill. Yeah. So that's one of the, the, the concerns that you have. But anytime we have something that we're changing and talking about these funds, it should be um, an ordinance so that it's just full transparency to the public as to what we're doing. Uh, my request would be that we do it sometime in the first half of February. That would give time for some of these other things to move through the mill on the location of Yusuf Park, the location of some property, and some other things that we intend to do. So that would be, uh, I don't need a vote on it, but I would like concurrence, which I think I have from council, that we do it. Well, I would only make one comment. We hired a capital project sales tax manager, and here we are getting into his knickers. Right. Why don't we just leave it alone and let him come in? He's going to come in and tell us what he thinks needs to be done with that money, and we can respond as we are as we need to. Uh, and, My concern and, is that right now we don't have the money by the orders on the ballot in Capital Three. There's no money to purchase property. But Capital Three is good for another five years, I think, or four years. Five we years. have not done a very good job of managing the order and the money on Capital Two. And I think we need to at least if do something to say that we're looking at the money. But we are. We appointed a capital project sales tax manager, and that's exactly what he's doing. Then he needs to come in in February with the preliminary report. He's come in every month for two months, um, starting last month. He's come in October, November, and I, I think we're going to get a December report, I hope. The purpose and need has not been addressed, so okay. uh, I'll leave it up to council to decide whether we do it or not. Okay. But I just caution you what can happen to us in the future happened on Capital Two. Okay. No vote on number five. Number six. Can I make a comment first before we leave yes. number five? Yes, sir. Uh, back in July, we had probably 20 different projects still under CPST 2 that were listed with some just a few dollars, some with several tens of even hundreds of thousands of dollars that we made some readjustments to um, and consolidate that down to just uh, uh, about 10 different projects. and. Now that we're into this a little bit further and we've had a report from Clemson, we moving on, uh, I'm going to be meeting with Glenn Friday afternoon and we were going to be going over some of these projects and refining a little bit further. Uh, I'll talk to him about that and we will bring back something on some, if not most of these projects probably even before February that need any purpose and need changes or other changes. Now that I, I, at first when you sent this memo, I didn't know what exactly you wanted, so, but now, now that I know, we, we could handle it. You would solve Mr. DeWar and I's dilemma. dilemma. Yes. But well, we don't want you to be in a dilemma. <laughs> no, dilemmas are no fun. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for the comment. Thanks. <laughs> okay, item six, employment contract for the interim city manager. Um, about six months ago, uh, you all hired me on a temporary basis uh, for six months. And um, here we are six months later, and... You're still here. I'm still here. Uh, not that I'm not enjoying it, but uh, we're, we're moving on in the process. And just, again, for the public's sake, let me tell you where the process is at. We, we did hire a firm... Slavin and Associates. Uh, they have put together uh, the information which has been sent out to all the other previous individuals that applied for the position and is on their website and is in national publications. On December the 29th, that's a Monday, um, we originally were going to say the 26th, but we thought we'll give them two extra days because of the holiday. Uh, they will take a look at all the resumes that they receive, start going through a vetting process, come back to council in early January uh, with about a eight to 12 potential candidates for you to look at, uh, hopefully narrow it down so that they could do some more in-depth study. And the goal would be by the end of January to start setting up interviews for a February timeframe. Uh, once the interviews were completed, 
then you'd be able to uh, hopefully choose someone, negotiate with them, and hire them, and they could be here sometime in March. Uh, that's the goal. Now, of course, our goal was earlier that we'd have some by now. Uh, this contract will allow you to continue uh, working with me if you so desire. Uh, it's set up so that once a city manager is hired, uh, you can continue uh, using my services if you wanted to. We talked about the budget because February is the time that you really sit down and you hone that budget down uh, to a workable document. And it's gonna be very difficult in February, I mean in March, when this person comes on to be trying to do a budget and meet people and try to understand the city and staff and council and, and, and the workings of our community. So uh, we have a contract before you, um, open to any changes you have. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a good working relationship over the last six months. It's been a trying at times uh, to get some things resolved. Uh, because there's been a lot of issues that have come before council uh, and issues that you've been dealing with from the past. So uh, we're here to continue to serve you in whatever way you'd like. And, and I just want to say this, I don't know what we'd have done without Roger here helping us through. We wouldn't be where we are today. There were, as, as he said, a multitude of different things, different projects, different things to consider. And, and uh, we, we appreciate, Roger, you, your, your expertise and your desire to come back and want to help not only City Council, but the City of Aiken and, uh, that you love, and we all know that. And so uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this contract for Roger to, to stay on with us for another term. Second. And, Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? One of the things that I can say without hesitancy is that we can't complain that Roger has not kept us informed and that we have not met on issues because we certainly have had uh, many meetings to try to uh, resolve some things but also to get caught up with some things that we were concerned about in the past. So uh, he kept us pretty busy, Roger. That's, that's my job. <laughs> and sometime a little worn out. <laughs> Any other comment? If not, show of hands, please. Uh, pass this unanimously. Okay. Other information? Yes. Any any issues? I'd just like to re reiterate a comment I made earlier that we need to be very aggressive in at least asking the delegation uh, to work hard to get us a 15% reimbursement. <coughs> My understanding is that the state has, in the past, normally done that. Yes. And it's uh, it's fallen on hard times. I have um, I am working with Senator Young. Made him aware of it. I don't I don't know whether uh, Stewart uh, he got numbers from you. Senator Young. Okay. How about, uh, how about us issuing a letter with all council members signing it? And it wouldn't be a bad idea to ask the county to do the same. <laughs> what did we do with item three? Just deferred it? The enterprise move? Yes. He yes withdrew I, it. I withdrew it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, before we adjourn, yes. I'd like to, some of you met Heather Jones. Uh, Heather, wave your hand. Heather is a student that, stand up and tell who you are again. <laughs> This is Heather's first Heather. ever meeting, uh, a city council meeting. So. Heather, get up and please go over there and tell us. <laughs> She's never attended a city council meeting before. This is, this is what you call broadening experience. <laughs> That's just about five. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hey. Hello. Uh, my name is Heather Jones. I'm from USC Aiken. And I've had the pleasure of having Mrs. Price as my mentor. So. She made me come out tonight, and it's a little <laughs> intimidating, <laughs> but uh, it was a good experience and I appreciate it. Did you learn a lot, Heather? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you majoring? Uh, biology. Oh, okay. Composting. I was going to say, if it's poli-sci, you may want to change your name. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you could you couldn't you, you couldn't have a better mentor. That's for sure. And you're welcome to come back again. Without me. <laughs> without my asking you to come. On your own. Thinking about it. <laughs> well, just spread that to your USCA friends that they need to come to find out what's going on. So, okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one one other item. We all received a resolution from the. Uh, Board of Directors of the Historic Foundation, which I think hopefully they realize is no longer needed. That was on the, uh, the historic end proposal. That has been tabled. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. We are adjourned.